Hey everybody, at home at Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today should be a bit of a fun video, I hope. It's gonna get a little bit technical, but I think you'll enjoy it. I have got four different decks from three different manufacturers that all have something in common. So sit back, relax, and we'll talk about what that is. So I mentioned to each one of these decks shares something in common, but let me introduce what I've got here first. This is the Orchard Audio Pecan Pie Premier Plus Streamer. Now, I only used it as a DAC, and we'll talk about that when I talk about the Orchard Audio. The FIO K9 AKM, which is a headphone amp, wonderful balanced headphone amp, but can be a digital preamp, has balanced outputs, linear power supply, all that in there. Then I have a Gishelli J2S socketed version and a Gishelli Daisy. So what do they all share? Well, they all share the exact same DAC chipset, although the Daisy's got two of them because it's dual mono. And that is the AKM AK4499 EXEQ plus AK4191 EX switched resistor multi-bit hybrid Delta Sigma DAC set. Quite a mouthful, but it is an amazing technology. I think this is a huge advancement in chip-based DACs. Now, obviously, there's ladder DACs, you know, the resistor ladder DACs, and I did a review on a Pontus and a, and a little FIO unit that was a ladder DAC. There are multi-bit DACs, and, of course, I own one in the, in the shit Bifrost, and there are other multi-bit DACs out there that are basically r r but they do it on a chip that, you know, the, the Bifrost does it on a chip that was designed for medical imaging, so it's not really an audio piece but it's a wonderful way to create a multi-bit DAC. And of course, back in the day, most of our CD players had Burr Brown multi-bit DACs or Philips multi-bit DAC chips in them. Uh, and so multi-bit's been around for quite a long time. But when we went to Bitstream, or what ultimately was renamed Delta Sigma, there was one chip did all the work. It was quite a bit of glare. And I, to me, there was a digital artifact in all of that that I found kind of hard to listen to. This changes all of that. I'm going to talk about it more in depth in a minute. So I'm going to reconfigure. We're going to talk about the Orchard Audio. I'm going to do a little bit of an overview on the Gishelli J2S, and we'll go from there. So this actually is a Pecan Pie Premier Plus streamer, and I did a review of this earlier in, a, in the streamer shootout video I did. I am using this as a surrogate for the DAC only portion, which Orchard Audio does sell as a DAC only. It's just got a volume control, no display. It's a smaller box, but it uses the exact same uh, board inside for the DAC. So it's a balanced DAC. It has a spit if input. If you want single ended, that's an option. If you want headphone uh, jack, that's an option. If you want a USB to spit if converter, that's an option. I use this with a spit if, and I used it with a DDC that converted USB to spit if for this. Um, and I ran it just as the deck only. And the curious thing is, you don't need to power it up. There's a power button on the back, but that just wakes up to Pecan Pie. If this is plugged into power, the DAC is on all the time, so it's always ready to go. So I did use it just as a DAC. And again, there'll be a link in the video description. The sound of this DAC is very, very good. It's super clean, very, very linear, very resolute. Um, as is true with most Orchard Audio products or all the ones I've had experience with, it is absolutely super clean, squeaky clean. It imparts no sonic character of its own on the output signal from this. Um, very much like the Orchard Audio Star Crimson amp that I reviewed, it was basically like a straight wire with gain. It had no sonic character, and that's not a... I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That could be a great thing because whatever you plug into it, if that has a sonic character, you're going to hear it out the speakers because it just doesn't impart any sound, any sonic character of its own. And this is very similar too. So super squeaky clean, very resolute, very high resolution, very detailed uh, analog output from this device. Wonderful DAC. And again, uses the AKM4499. So the Orchard Audio gets high marks. You can buy it as a kit too, if you want to. But again, at about $6.99, I think for the DAC only, and then there's options on it um, and you can configure it any way you want to. I think it's an excellent, super well-built, really clean sounding uh, DAC for sure. That's the Orchard Audio. Again, the surrogate for the Pecan Pie Plus DAC only product.
So in and amongst all of the DACs that use this AKM chipset, this is kind of the little one. And I wanted to do just a quick overview of the J2S, the socketed uh, J2 with the AK4499 chipset in it. This is my personal unit. Um, I bought this and got this as an additional reference DAC in addition to my modified chip Bifrost, which is getting a little long in the tooth um, and still sounds wonderful and still a reference for me and still a sound that I'm so used to after all these years that I can then judge other things based on what goes through it. But this also gives me an amazingly kind of more modern, move it forward, better resolution, probably measures much better than the, the Bifrost does. Sounds wonderful. It's an excellent piece, the little J2S. Now, a lot of people ask me questions about the Gishelli DAX and rolling op amps, and I have done that. But I have a suggestion for everybody. Pro tip. If you're going to consider purchasing a J2S AK4499 that, that is socketed, which is the only way you can buy it, use the stock TI OPA 1656 op amps. Listen to it for a couple of months before you roll the op amps. Get used to the sound first. It sounds wonderful with the stock op amps. It's amazing with the stock op amps. But until you know what that sounds like, if you change an op amp, you'll never know if there was a difference and if it's better or not. If you just get it with the upgraded op amps right out of the box, you'll never have experienced it stock and you won't know if there's an improvement or not. So again, take your time, listen to the DAC with the stock op amps for a while, get used to its sound, and then you can make a value judgment when you want to roll op amps. And I have rolled op amps and I've rolled a lot of op amps in this, this thing. So obviously I listened to it for a very long time with the stock TI op amps. I've rolled in the Burson uh, V5s and V7 Vivid. They have a, a great sound, they're a little bit warmer. The V5s have a little bit lower output. The V7 is very good to Vivid, very, very nice. Um, and, a, and wonderful, a bit of an improvement over the stock TIs. And then of course I did the Sparkos 3602s. That's a very good op amp. It's got good drive to it. It's got good pace. It's a little stronger sounding than the Burst and a little more dynamic possibly would be the right word for it. So a very wonderful sound to the, the 3602s. Now, the J2S will take on the single-ended side one of the big Sparkos 2509s, and I have tried that. And I'm not sure I heard a significant enough difference between the 3602 and the 2509 to justify that big increase in price. Also, too, and this is just anecdotal, and I don't know, and I haven't talked to Gino Giselli about it, but when I was running the 2509, this thing got a little warm. I think that's the bigger op amp requires a bit more power from the power supply. And I know he upgraded the power supply in the J3 Pro because it's specifically designed to accommodate the 2509. So there may be, I might not, I might ask you to refrain from putting a 2509 in the standard J2S. But it's a wonderful sounding DAC and it's a good bench benchmark for me as I move forward with different stuff. So it allows me, I'm very familiar with the sound, I've listened to it for a long time, and now I can start to make value judgments against the sound of other products and what those differences are. And that's kind of the whole thing is to put a flag in the sand so I know this sound. What's different about this? What's better about this? Whatever, as I compare. And that's what this little guy does for me. So anyway, that's a quick overview of the J2S 4499. And if you're interested in the Giselli DAX, again, there'll be a link in the video description. So here are two more DAX that I have in-house right now that use the AKM chipset. And both of them are excellent. The, the FIO K9 AKM and the Giselli Daisy. Now the FIO AKM 99 is marketed by FIO as a headphone amp DAC probably for the, you know, obviously for the desktop folks and for gamers and things like that. Um, I thought because of the AKM chipset that I'd put it in the big system. So I've had it on the big Cambridge amp, the Galleon, the big Hegel. I had it on the Galleon TSA 75. I've had it on just about every high-end piece of gear I've had in recently um, and used it as a DAC only or as a preamp DAC for a digital front end, and it does an exceptionally good job at, uh, at that. So when I review this, I'm probably going to review it as a headphone amp first, but I wanted to let you guys know that as a DAC or as a digital preamp for a digital front end for a, a fully digital system, it is very, very good. Fully balanced, already got a linear power supply in it. All the right uh, goes into, goes out is in technology is already in this thing. Uh, remarkable. So look for the review on that coming up. Also look for the review on the Giselli Daisy. Now this isn't going to be a full review. I'm going to just kind of do a quick overview. It is a uses uh, two of the AK4499 chipsets in it. So it's fully balanced dual mono setup. 
Uh, and lo obviously, lots of goes into and lots of goes out is and a lot of flexibility and just remarkable. And I'll talk about it more when I do its full review. But what I really kind of want to do is give you guys an overview of why I'm so infatuated with this AKM AK4499EXEQ plus AK4191EX combination hybrid switched resistor multi bit delta sigma chipset. I think it represents uh, an, an entirely game changing technology in chip based DACs. Um, basically, what they do is the 4499 is a res switched resistor DAC. That's all it does, it's just a DAC. It doesn't do any pre processing of the signal. That's done by the 4191. So the 4191 takes the signal coming in from, if it's coming in from USB, it's asynchronous. So it, the clock in the DAC is setting the timing. So it just takes it into the 4191. If it comes in on SPDIF, all these DACs use really high quality DAC re receiver, SPDIF receivers. They're either the Burr Brown TI versions or the Cirrus Logic. Um, they're all excellent at that. So remember with SPDIF, it's the sending device's clock that determines the timing, not the DAC's clock. And so having a good SPDIF receiver is important, and then it has to go through a really good oscillator clock, and all of these DACs use excellent oscillator clocks. So that SPDIF signal is timed, jitter reduced, all of those other things it, by, by the clock and the SPDIF receiver before it hits the 4191 chipset, which then does the noise shaping, again, cleans up any residual jitter, um, applies the oversampling, it, run, it runs at 256 times oversampling, and it does all the noise shaping, noise reduction, and all of the preparation of the digital signal prior to it going, being output to the 4499, which then does the analog conversion and out to the rest of the analog section, op amps, and out to your ears. So I think that combination gives a sonic character to this, which has no digital artifacts at all. Um, I complain about some chips having digital artifacts, and I believe they do. I believe a lot of those chipsets, and I own a bunch of them, those chips are small mobile chips. They run on five volts. They're easy to configure. They're inexpensive to implement. They're, you know, there are some of them that sound okay to my ear, but they still have a little bit of that digital glare to them. This, this starting with the 4493 from AKM, that had much less digital glare, almost I, I'd really listen hard to pick it out on that one. That's a great single chip DAC. But the twin chip 4499, 4191, set takes it to another level. It is absolutely no digital artifact at all. It is clean. Now, I'm, I, I almost want to call it an analog sound, and it is very much an analog sound. I'll be honest with you, the most analog sounding DACs I know of are the Wolfson, I think it's the 8412. That was the chip that was in the Advanced Paris XI-75 I reviewed. It's used by uh, Lingdorf Steinway. It's used by a lot of folks in Europe. It's an excellent chip. It's a very warm, very analog sounding chipset, but it doesn't have the resolution of the AKM. And I think that's the one of the party pieces for the AKM is it's so high resolution, it measures beautifully. It has all the benefits of kind of that R to R, uh, ladder DAC, um, multi-bit sort of sonic characteristic, but with the signal noise ratio and high dynamic range and all of the wonderful measurements you get out of a Delta Sigma DAC, but no digital artifacts. That's why I'm infatuated with it, I think. Anyway, that's kind of the overview of that chipset and the DACs that use it. And hopefully I didn't bore you to death. And if you're still alive and you want to support the channel, you can. If you want to give me a like and a subscribe, that's great. If you want to buy me a granola bar, there's a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. If you'd like to join the channel, there is a link to do so in the pin description and in the video description. And also in the video description will be links to the Giselli webpage and the Orchard Audio webpage. I don't have an affiliate link with those folks, but it's just there if you want to pursue that any further. Um, also, too, in the video description are Amazon affiliate links, and we all know how those work. Below that are my playlists and please listen to them and tell me what you think. I've asked people to send me playlists. You guys have done a really good job. If you haven't checked out the community post where the playlists live, please do so. There's some wonderful music there. I found some really great stuff there. Please comment. I would ask that you keep the comments polite, professional, and friendly. There's no reason to get into an argument with people and there's no reason to denigrate things, products, or people for their opinions. So everybody gets an opinion. Every opinion is right for that individual. So that's it. So I'm going to moderate the comments. I apologize for the lecture, but I feel the need to do that because of some recent things that have occurred. Anyway, please comment. Tell me what you think. Share with me your opinion. Share with me your experiences. Share with me your thoughts. I want to hear what you guys think because a lot of times 
I'll get someone ask me a question in a comment that will then spark me to do something different on the channel, maybe do a different review or look at a different product in a different way. And I need that feedback from you guys just so I can continue to provide valuable information for everybody that watches the channel. That's a long-winded long -winded way to say, please comment. I think I've run out of things to say, believe it or not. That's so unusual for me. My name's Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. It's now time for you to go listen to some music that you love, maybe on a chip, maybe on a DAC with the AKM chipset in it. Thank you so very much for your time. I am grateful for it.